Hello everyone, uh, I'm making a second video today. I already made a video where I was included. I made top seven uh, Czech players. And you know, I thought that, you know, <laughs> I already uh, talked about myself today, so might as well do it again. Uh, today I'm gonna make a review of one of my uh, games. It's a finals of Grand Prix Barcelona. Uh, and I'm not here uh, alone again. I'm here with Arnie. Uh, how it's going, man? Uh, it's going great. Thanks for having me again. Uh, I'm going to look forward to uh, pointing each and every one of your mistakes. <laughs> of course, I'm going to admire your absolute master um, masterfulness. Yeah, let's so go, let's do this. Yeah, I, I made a uh, review with Arne last week. Uh, he liked to do it and the video was popular. So I asked him if he wants to do it again and he agreed. Uh, you know, if he wants to continue with doing that, that would be great. I'm not sure <laughs> whether he will want to after this or not, but you know, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, no, it's fun. Let's do it. Okay, so uh, this is going to be a matchup of Mardu vehicles versus uh, four color Sahili. Have you like played during that age or? Uh, oh, I absolutely did. I think this is GP Barcelona, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, I've played in a tournament. Uh, I was crazy enough to not play Sahili though. I was playing Marvel back then. But yeah, I definitely. You play Marvel. Marvel, yeah, Marvel bec before it was broken, basically. Be after Sahili got banned, Marvel was the best deck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, like, me, me, I also think that the, the Marvel version, like, wasn't that good back then. Like, it's possible that, you know, mm -hmm. after Marvel got broken, and everyone was playing it, and people, like, were able to find the right version, maybe, like, with the sensors and glimmer or something that Brad won a GP with. Maybe it would be a contender to these decks. But, you know, definitely back in the day, these, like, the Marty deck and the Sahil deck were the two, two best decks. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so before we go to the video, let's look at the deck list a little bit. We're actually gonna watch uh, game three, so it's going to be post board. So uh, what's interesting about uh, Mardu vehicles is that like game one, it was like this proactive aggro deck, right? But they had this like uh, mid range game plan in, in a board, and most of the time uh, when they played against both Sahili and Mardu, they like boarded into this like you know auto Liliana, painful truths, planeswalker kind of a deck. Um, would you agree with that? Um, if I remember correctly, yeah, that, that, that was the case. Um, I, I assume I haven't played the Sahidi versus um, Mado matchup much, but Mado is obviously the aggressor. But interestingly enough, um, they are still siding into a control version. Why is that? Yeah, like, it, it's actually kind of interesting. Um, you know, I wasn't when I was playing the when I was like going through the tournament. I was like learning how to play against Mado. Obviously, I played against it on like Magic Online a lot, but. You know, it, it just wasn't obvious to me that they're always going to do that, but every single one of my opponents did. I'm not like necessarily saying that it's like the right way to, to board, but every single one of my opponents did. And I actually think it worked really well against most of the Sahili players, and I, I, I think that's the reason why they were beating them. But as I was going through the tournament, I was like, oh, they're all doing this. So I just like, let's just look at my deck. Um, this mm -hmm. is the deck list that I want to want the GP with. Um, you know, on the first glance, you would think that cards like, for example, Ode of Chandra would be really good because, like, game one, they have, um, you know, these, like, small creatures that you want to kill, the Scrunger and Exemplar, you can even kill Talia. But as I was going through the tournament, I realized that they just, like, always board them out. So I just started boarding out some of my removal, and I was just, like, boarding in, like, Negates, Tireless Trucker. And, you know, when you have, like, a Negate Trucker... Felidar kind of a deck, you're, you're, you're like suddenly in like a really good spot against them, I feel, I, I felt like. Hmm, okay, interesting. So they were boarding out two craft exemplar. Yeah, like every single one of, one of my, my opponents just kind of went bigger post board. I think it like worked well against the regular opponents because they just still had like the removal. Um, so, so the you know, they just had like these planeswalkers and they had like a shock or whatever to, to break up your combo and it just like grinded you out mm -hmm. if they weren't prepared. I even like lost some of the games in, in like in the Swiss rounds because you know exactly like I drew like two out of Chandras and they just played like Opnix Silis and I lost or whatever. <laughs> okay, interesting. Like it, you know, if, if my opponent knew for sure that I'm boarding this way and he would just like keep in the aggro plan, especially on the play, I think that would be really bad for me. But and so so like I was kind of scared about that and on a draw I of, often like hedged and like kept some removal, but it, I, you know, I, every single game they just like always had this setup and eventually I was like, well, I just like cannot do that anymore. I just like need these negates and stuff. 
Okay, okay, makes sense, yeah. Um, another interesting card is really is the Gremlins. Um, I actually think that my list was kind of bad, like I had two natural states and three rollies, the Gremlins. But the way they board it, I think that's, by the way, another reason why they maybe did that, because, you know, most people were just, like, overboarding on these, like, releases. Some people uh, had, had even, like, more removal, so just the aggro plan just wasn't working. Um, but, yeah, like, I, I wasn't, I, I think I was boarding in, like, one or two release the Gremlins and, like, wasn't boarding in the state at all, actually, in the end. Hmm, makes sense, yeah, I've been boarding out the artifact stuff. Yeah, sometimes uh, even the, the Mardu side was boarding in release the Gremlins because it uh, can kill both tokens from um, uh, Virtuoso and uh, can, it can kill a Sky Sovereign. So like for example, I played Marcio Carvalho in semi-finals and he boarded in two of them. Uh, yeah. uh, obviously I didn't draw any artifacts and he was stuck with it in, in hand and lost, but <laughs> that's just how it goes. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe not the best decision then. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's get into 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 the game. I don't actually think there's like that many interesting decisions But I, but I think that there is like one spot from uh, my side that I'm not even sure what I should have done so we can talk about it And I think Matthew made like one pretty big mistake. Uh, I'm curious whether you're gonna catch it or not So let's get into it So I think I'm gonna draw Both of our hands are, are really good could you make it full screen? Oh, or I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 I can make it full screen. It's okay. Mm. Uh, I should make myself a little bit smaller. Okay, I'm just gonna put myself like here or something. That's perfect. No, it's perfect. I mean, I can see everything. No, I mean in the OBS for the people. Oh yeah, yeah gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he has Scrounger, Heart of Current, Lands. And Gideon, I think. Or he, he maybe he, he doesn't have it now, but he, he's gonna draw it by turn four. Oh, look at that handsome boy. With his, with his, uh... <laughs> Not so handsome anymore, I got older, man. Nah. Um. Yeah, so like, I, I, I have a decision already. It's basically whether I take a Virtuoso or Rogue Refiner. Normally, Rogue Refiner is a better card, but I was on a draw and I had like a really good hand already and I was just basically scared of Gideon's and I and like Virtuoso fights Gideon better, so that's why I took it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so far the plays are kinda forced. You know, obviously you play the hard first to attack for more. I just go Servant here. Nothing too interesting so far. That's kind of unfortunate about Magic that, you know, th these games are kind of long and the players need to make sure that they're doing everything ri right. But usually there are like one or two spots that are actually interesting. Hmm. God, I miss these real life tournaments. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, I, I actually played Eater Hub over Forest there because uh, if I draw another game trail, I need a forest in my hand to reveal to that. Mm, smart. No, we have those lands again, actually. Oh yeah, that's that's interesting. So you you can keep that in mind if you play with those lands from Strixhaven. Yeah, that's a, a very easy thing to to forget. Yeah. It's interesting. He uh, Matthew has you know he he has a uh, only one energy for for his black cards so he can like you know he doesn't have access to maybe two disintegrations or something currently that's good to note so now i feel like i'm i'm, I'm kind of screwed right like he has a scrounger into heart and if he has a gideon that's like pretty bad for me actually another interesting thing is that i uh, i got this decklist from brett nelson and he gave the decklist to Cory Bowmeister, who won a GP on the same weekend. So we like won with the same decklist. I think I made like two, uh, I played like two different cards in my deck. And one of them was that I played Tamiyo over one Virtual Over Chozo, I think. And it's going to be crucial. I, it, it, it won me game two and it's going to be crucial in this game as well. The Tamiyo? Yeah, I, I find out that it's like, just like, the way I lost to Mardu most of the time was just Gideon and Tamiya was just kind of good against it because it just allows you to, to tap the creatures and kill it. Hmm, okay. That's nice, huh? Yeah. Okay, so you're, you're thinking about playing a Vola with also? What, what are you thinking about here? Uh... You can go attune for an island and then play virtual. I think I think what I was thinking about is what land do I want to search for? 
if I remember correctly. Hmm. Is there any reason to just not go for island? Mm, I don't see it. But I, I suppose it's a high intensity situation. You just want to make sure that you're not missing something. Like I'm not I'm not gonna either way, I'm not gonna lose any energy, but uh yeah, getting island is probably just better. Well, you lose exactly one energy f to cast it, but yeah, you had to do that anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which also is, is so good against these aggressive decks. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole energy theme was so busted. Yeah, even um, even after the, some of the cards got banned, yeah. it was look, still... Look, really they, they, they banned Sahili, and then they banned Marvel, and Timo Energy was still the best deck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they realized they had to ban Refiner and Aoife. Uh, what is, what's the card called? Uh, Rogue Refiner? No, no, the, the one you have in the graveyard right now. The bad uh, e Eater Hub. Uh, no, the Attune of Eater or something. That's, yeah, yeah, Attune. Yeah. yeah, those are the times. Those were the times, yeah. I remember I played Timor Energy with Scarab Gods at the Pro Tour. <laughs> <laughs> so I will have like kind of an interesting decision here. Um, you know what? So. I'll let him attack and then I will ask you what you would do. Mm. So he makes a he makes a two two, but he activates the heart by uh, using the the heart's ability to remove a counter from a planeswalker. Mm, makes sense. And what do you do? Uh, my, I think my hand currently is Sa Forest Sahili Tamio, a Virla Virtuoso, and a Rogue, Rogue Refiner. He also has a two two with his Gideon. He's just like looking for it. So the Tamio, when she comes to the play, she has four loyalty, right? Yeah. So you can Minus either two tap two permanents, and they don't untap. Uh, it's like artifact or creatures, I think. Or you can you can plus one and two target creatures. Uh, you know when they deal damage to an opponent, you draw a card. So but like like how do you block? You can either like block with virtuoso and trade, or you can like make a top turn and jump, or you can just can like not block at all. Um, you have another virtuoso in hand, okay. So what I would probably do, I would probably just block, I would make two tokens and just block the scrounger. I mean, wait a minute. Nah, actually. Uh, <laughs> Look, you, you can make two tokens, then like he makes a knight, so he has two blockers. Mm -hmm. If you make two tokens and take seven, then you go to nine and then you can attack with everything on the Gideon and the Gideon dies. He okay. will, but you will lose the Verlevature also, and you won't have a board position anymore. So that's not optimal. So you probably want to use the Tamio in your turn to slow your opponent down. So you could block the Verlevature also on the Scrounger, make two tokens, and you have four power. And um, that's plenty. Then you play Tamio, tap the two creatures, and and attack down the Gideon. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, that's exactly what I did. Also, if you trade with a Scrounger, you know, he might not have like another way to crew the heart, which is like another, you know, maybe mm. maybe that can matter as well. But I, exactly as you're, as, as, as you're saying, like, I just don't want to take that much damage. I have another virtuals in my hand yeah. and, you know, I can just stop his guy single Gideon. So that's what I did. There's actually an awkward situation where um, I block the I block the scrounger and then I like search for the tokens and my opponent's like, wait, wait, like, you're already blocked, you can't block with the tokens. And I'm like, well, I, I don't want to block with the tokens, I just want to, like, make the tokens, you know, after, after I blocked. Hmm. Okay. That's a long day, right? You, you gotta be super exhausted and your opponent too after. And well, he even called, like, a judge for it. I was like, no, no, I like it, you know, I just want to, I blocked and then I want to use my ability. Okay, oh, weird. I guess we can fast forward that then. Yeah, sure. Uh, I don't want to go to... Yeah, so I, I was just like searching for the tokens and now he's like, wait. Okay, yeah, just, just fast forward then. I mean, this is... And by the way, for, for anyone watching, I haven't watched this game. I, I Petra didn't tell me which game he was wanted to review. So this is all on the fly. This is all... Oh, really? I told you, man. <laughs> you did? <laughs> I did. You just you didn't listen to me. Spot. 
<laughs> you're just you're just I mean, making I, it up I, right now okay, to have an excuse anyway. to have an excuse okay. to not be prepared no. correctly okay fine <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay so yeah, now, yeah. now now I actually drew Felidar, so you know, I have a Sahili in my hand already. So obviously, you know, assuming that Matt doesn't have anything, now it can potentially be better to play the Felidar, right? Instead of playing the Temi, or would you, would you still go for Temi, or what would you do? Assuming he doesn't have anything. Yeah, assuming he doesn't have anything. But I you know, it's not like I'm necessarily dying, I still have the Topters out. Yeah, you survive. Um, but this is just such a good Tamiya turn. I mean, it's not getting better. Mm -hmm. This is insane for Tamiya. So I would probably just keep back. I mean, do they have any haste creatures? Do you have to keep back a Fopter for any haste creatures? I don't think the, so. Like, the only way they can deal damage to they have, like, Walking Ballista and they have Disintegration. Mm, uh, disintegration also kills Planeswalkers. Yeah, like, one, one problem with playing the Tamiya is that, you know, it's, like, a little bit... You know, my hand is obviously pretty good, so I'm probably not gonna lose the late game, but just like, rem remember, their, their deck is like really, really powerful post-board deck. Like, sometimes you think that, you know, as long as I survive, I'm fine, but then they just like start jamming all these Planeswalkers and they could, or they go like Painful Truths, you know? So you yeah. you have to be cautious about your resources. So like one thing that you have to be worried, I was like a little bit concerned about is that if I go Tamiyo minus, he can like disintegration and kill like my servant and Tamiyo as well. So I was like thinking that maybe uh, there is a way for me to like you know plus the Tamiyo and start drawing cards or something. But in the end, as you're saying, I went for the I went for the minus. But I was thinking yeah. on that for a long time. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean. You're looking at your hand, you have Felida, you have another Virtuoso, you have Sahili, so you have gas. I think your main goal is to get the Gideon off the board and slow your opponent down so much. Like, Tamiya is really, really good here. And yes, Disintegration is annoying, but um, then you still have... Uh, then they don't have the Disintegration for the Guardian, right? And I guess you didn't tank much, you just played it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe that was uh, the, the game before where it was actually really close. I, maybe I uh, misremem misremembered. Also, if he just doesn't have the dis disintegration, you know, and then it's like insane. I yeah. guess they also play Shock, but... Okay. Yeah, so like, you know, on, on on the first glance, you wouldn't think that Tamiyo was that good in this matchup or whatever, but this exact scenario happened to me so much online that I was just like, I just have to play this card. <laughs> yeah. Tamiyo is definitely a powerful planeswalker, just very hard to cast. Yeah, it's, I'm actually kind of surprised that I didn't see that much more play. Yeah, I mean, the Sahili that I played, it, they maybe should have played more, actually, yeah. So I drew another Felidar Guardian. So now, now I have two Guardians and Sahili, and you know, obviously your opponent doesn't know that. So like, they sometimes have a decision of like if they wanna like go for the Sahilis or for the for the Felidars. So just pointing that out. Mm -hmm. Um, what would you what would you do this turn? Yeah, just put Felidar, flick it off. What would you? Okay, are you sure? Yeah, I think. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know exactly your hand, but okay. My hand is my hand is virtuoso, Sahili, uh, rogue definer, and two folders. Oh, rogue definer. Hmm. A rogue definer is tempting too, but getting the folder out to threaten the combo is pretty tight. Um, and then with the oath, you can find a land hopefully. But it's it kind of unfortunate that you don't have two white mana. I probably lean towards playing the folder. And just and blinking just the oath. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that, I, I think that, up, I suppose, uh, but that's that's a weird line. You don't have a land in hand, right? No. Hmm. I don't know how many white sources you have. Uh, we can we can uh, take a look at that, I guess. I mean. So the deck plays four eater hub. Uh, one in spring vintage, one planes, and four e traps, uh, attunes. But you cannot hit attune with uh with, with the out, right? Yeah, yeah. So you don't even have that much white mana left. But then again, you just play one. I mean, it's between rogue refiner and Felida. Well, it's I also think, think, it's also what you blink with Felida, right? Also, yes. uh, there's another question whether you attack with any of these creatures. Like, it's not that impactful. But if it's free, then why not? So that's another um, question to ask for. I wouldn't attack. <laughs> If, okay. this, if they have this integration, you want to double block the knight, probably. Mm -hmm. um, 
But you're you but, but you're winning. But but your main game plan right now is to probably win win with the combo. So is isn't maybe yeah. like jumping the heart twice better than uh, then double blocking with the knight? Yeah, yeah, that's totally reasonable. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, but if that's the if that's the case, if 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 that's the case, then maybe you wanna attack, right? Because it's like so unlikely that he's gonna go both disintegration, be able to uh, be able to activate the heart, and also like kill your creatures. Fair. Then you wanna attack with one. Okay, reasonable. You convinced me there. That that is a very tight play. Doing that. I was actually thinking about that a lot. That's what took me the most time this turn. But in the end, I was just too scared, and I think I didn't attack. Yeah. But uh, you know, You're really winning by the combo, so that's why I didn't think about attacking. Yeah, 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 exactly. But you know, on the other hand, if it's like hundred percent better, then you should do it. But you know, I was like thinking about that. I was actually not f thinking about what I should like play this turn. I was the the only thing that I was thinking about whether I should like attack with one of these creatures or not. I didn't come to a reason why I shouldn't, but in the end, I was just like maybe I'm just like forgetting something and I get screwed, uh, and I just didn't attack. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, maybe that was a mistake. But I don't think it really matters that much. Mm, yeah, I mean, Rogue Fan is also enticing. I don't know. It's it's curious. Oh, I did attack. Okay, okay, I may okay. I did attack. All right. I thought that I didn't, but I guess I was better back then than I am now. <laughs> so I actually ended up uh, blinking the Eater Hub. Okay. So w that that's actually like kind of important for my opponent, though, right? Like most of the times, I I also missed the land drop. So the fact that I blinked an Eater Hub means almost hundred percent that I have another Felida, right? Yeah, it must be. Yeah. Because your mana otherwise is good to cast everything else. By the way, my opponent has a has a shambling wand in play, which uh, mm. you might not see here. Yeah, yeah, I, I have it in mind. Yeah. Another attack for two. Take that, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I had to, I had to like figure it, figure it, this out during my turn because you know, if if I wanted to double block, then obviously I don't attack. But I came to conclusion that I just want to win the combo, and this two two do doesn't matter that much. So I'm gonna use this these topters to like chump the heart anyway. So if this happens, like I didn't want to double block anyway, so it was just a free damage. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, down to one card, two disintegrations played. That's good. I assume you just play Felidar here. Yeah. So here I draw another Felidar, so I'm like, oh, that's like great. Okay. This turn, like, I took two damage and I have another Felidar, so it's like 100% that I'm going for com combo, so I just like didn't attack here. Yeah, and also he can activate Shambling Rand. Yeah, yeah. He can double block the. I guess you could do it. So this this is this is this is going to be the most interesting part of the video. So like once again, I you know went for a Felidar. And blink eater hub so like one obviously it's like pretty unlikely that i have three folidars but why would i make the play i also kind of hinted on that the last turn, right like i blink the eater hub to be able to play this guardian and i like did the same thing again so even though it's like pretty unlikely that i have the third one like why else would i do that right yeah so my opponent draws a shock here and that's what makes this interesting i'll just uh, let it play out Yo, so Shark can just disrupt the combo by killing the Sahili. Yeah, exactly. Um, what what happens is that you you blink the Felidar, and then when Felidar comes into play, and you target Sahili, it's on one counter, so you can just shock the Sahili. So okay, uh, what do you think about this attack? He has two options. He can either attack with these two, or he can activate the heart and attack with the heart. So just give it a give it a give it a thought. So I, I assume his plan is to shock your Felida mm -hmm. when you block, which I don't like as much, honestly. I would probably just screw the heart. Um what like why, why what are the reasons? The reason being this attack, you you just block with your Felida and then you just take two. Um so it's it's just two damage essentially, and the other one is four damage. I mean, 
Yeah. But I can just so chum the the heart, right? Also, like maybe you like if I block yeah. with Felidarn, then you can shock it, right? Yeah, but I don't know if you want to be doing that if you're Matthew. I don't yeah. think you want to be shocking the Felidarn. Yeah, exactly. So I I think this is like where he made a mistake. He you know he thought that you know this this is just better because he attacks with two creatures. Um, Whereas if he just attacked with heart, I can just jump it, right? But but if he attacks with two, uh, not not only that, you know, if I jump one, the other one goes through. But if I block with Felidar, then he can shock it, and you know, I even asked him after the match, and he said, "Well, you already played two Felidars, no Sahili, so obviously I go for the Felidars." But as I said before, the fact that I blink this Eater Hub means most likely that I have another Felidar Guardian. Like maybe maybe I can have like really weird hand. And I can have like hardness lighting that I need the need the energy for to kill the heart, but I think that's super unlikely, right? It probably just means that I have under Felidar. And if that's the case, you want to keep the shock for uh, the Sahili, and then it's just better to attack with his heart because you know if you don't want to sh sh use shock it against this Felidar, then I'm just gonna trade my top tier for this two two because I can just double block. You just deal two damage instead of just like forcing me to jump, and you lose the shock. So you know I I actually think he like lost the game here. Maybe he would have lost anyway. Um, but I think his next draw is like Traven Inspector into Avacyn, so it, it would definitely get very interesting because I wouldn't be necessarily be able to win with a combo. But as it, as it is, he 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 kind of loses the shock. I just play another Felidar, and then you know I just win with the combo. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. One up from you is interesting. Yeah, it's signalizing it. Yeah. Yeah, when I was playing, I was just like, oh, "How do I make it look like I, I don't? I'm just like thinking about it, and I don't want to lose the to lose the fillet there. I was just like so hoping that he like shocks it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes, kill my creature. Do it. Yes. <laughs> He's thinking that it worked out well for him, but... Yeah, of course. So now I obviously don't need uh, another, uh, you know, white mana, so I can just blink the oath here. Mm. Once again, maybe I should like attack with the the doctors, but I was just, I don't know, <laughs> I was just like not thinking about attacking at this point anymore. Yeah, understandable. Feeling good about this position? Uh, yeah, I, I, I was happy. feeling very good, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Adrenaline pumping through your veins. Yeah, okay, when he drew no. Inspector, I was like, no. <laughs> actually, actually, I, by the way, I could have, I could have died if he drew a uh, Walking Ballista. I would actually be dead because he can walk in Ballista for free, activate this, kill these top tiers, deal four, and then kill me with Ballista. So I was just like, you know, if he like top deck Ballista, I would just lose there. Um, so I was definitely not feeling that good about my position, you know, my, my heart was just like pumping out. Yeah. Walking Ballista was quite good, right? It just sat there and, and you couldn't combo off. Yeah, also, it could like also kill the top tiers. In the mirror, it wasn't bad either because, you know, obviously in the late game, it can just like take over, it can like shoot down Gideons and stuff. It was really good. It was just like the, the meta game turned out in the way where Ballista was really good. Like, obviously, it's a good card, but I don't think it would necessarily see play in like all the standard formats, but the conditions just were just exactly met for, for that card to shine, so. Yeah, he's just like yeah. trying to make it look that he has something, but obviously I'm gonna go. I was actually kind of considering not going for it there. Maybe we can talk about that as well, because, you know, I'm right now I'm kind of winning the grind grinding game as well. And if he did draw like disintegration or something, maybe maybe like playing a different card was better. But obviously, you know, you just have to win and he just drew a random card. So in the end, uh, I decided to just like, you know, <laughs> go for it. And even, even if he has something, it's not like I'm, I'm, I'm gonna lose on the spot. I mean, you can play the refiner first, right? Technically. <sighs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the game was necessarily like super interesting, but I just, you know, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a 
very narcissistic person, so I just love to talk about myself, and I just wanted to do a video, one video like that. Unfortunately, even though I won four GPs, that only two of them are on camera, so you know that's unfortunate. But so, <laughs> which one is also on camera? Uh, the team one. Uh, team it's like one. Washington DC. Oh yeah, nice, nice, nice. Oh yeah, I mean, um, unfortunately, all finals wasn't on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Moment yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, oh, I forgot about that one. That, that one wasn't on camera as well. That would be actually a super interesting game to talk about. I think we both true, made many true. many mistakes. True, that so, would be lovely, man. That game was insane. But yeah, oh my god. Don't even remind me, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah. What? For people, uh, maybe I should like tell people. For people who don't know, me and Arnie played a finals of GP Rimini in Band Company Mirror. And I think we both may, might have been playing the, the worst verse during the entire tournament. Like Arne forgot to make like free clues from Tracker. And one of the games, I lost the game where I was just like taking over. And in, in the end, I just like decided to like start killing him. And only three creatures that I left back to block were free reflector mages. And I had just like forgot that he placed one declaration in stone. Uh, because most people weren't playing it, and then you went like Declaration in Stone into Queller Queller and just killed me. <laughs> and I just felt like an idiot. I don't know, do you remember that? Yeah, of course. I mean, I don't think you would have won that game anyways. But really? Um, yeah, that, was, that was a sick moment. <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I you okay, were super okay. behind. I wasn't one life, but you were really behind. I think I had the more creatures, I had a better board position. I mean... No, I don't think so, but uh, it doesn't really matter. You beat me anyway. Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to poke into the, the wound here. Um, OK, yeah. cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, we can definitely do this more often. And uh, thanks for having me. Yeah. If you guys like the video, please click on the like and subscribe button. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye bye. Bye, bye. Arne.